need. Oh, hello. <coughs> Stop barking. Let me fix my camera and I will share the ingredients. You're gonna need milk, whole milk if you have it, um, butter, egg yolks, sugar, cornstarch or corn flour if you're in the UK. Let me see here if I can maneuver my camera a little better. It's too. Hi, Nina. Why isn't this move? There we go. Um, this won't work too well when I'm actually in the, well, now it's, hello. Uh, I'll have to put the camera down once we get started, but I just wanted to say hi. And if you guys want to do this and bake along, it's really important to have your ingredients out. So thank you, whoever asked. Hi, Nina. Um, Sahar, hello. Thank you. I hope you're having a great day too. Caroline, hello. If you guys want to do this, I've got 235 grams of whole milk, which is equivalent to a cup of whole milk. Then I've got 25 grams of butter. So that's what? Probably two tablespoons of butter. 58 grams of sugar. I'm not sure, but I think that's the same as a quarter of a cup. I wouldn't go with cups. If you if you like usually make macarons, you probably have a scale. So let me just stick to scale so I'm not guessing here. Uh, 58 grams of sugar, 17 grams of cornstarch, corn flour, whatever, wherever you are in the world, you call it different. And then there's gonna be um, 55 grams of egg yolks. Scales are life. I hear you on that. Hello from Iran. Uh, we're making pastry cream, Jan. We had the majority picking pastry cream over a live Mac bake today. And then this morning I checked on my community tab and macarons went out at the last minute, but I had already called it. So it's just funny because I checked right now and it was 51% asked for a macaron bake and you know the other bit asked for um i can't do math quick enough 49 percent maybe <laughs> asked for this so we're making this because we do max all the time and then we'll um might have time i refreshed up some of my eclairs and puff pastry or uh, not puff pastry shoe pastry and maybe we can um fill them or I can just showcase how to use um, pastry cream in different um, things. Aw, oh, thank you, Jan. Ciao. Hello. Hello from Holland. I am needing to wake up, y'all. Why am I subdued? My husband is taking the surgical oral boards tomorrow. So I feel like we're just a stress case of a house right now. So this is good to focus my attention on pastry and things that bring me joy and then not to worry about all he has to do tomorrow. How's everyone doing? Is everyone summer break? Those who have kids or are children? Uh, again, I'm just gonna say the ingredients really fast because if you want to do this with me, hi from Utah. I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you wanna do this with me, then it's great to have everything prepped. Just like macarons, you want to have everything laid out for you beforehand because you don't wanna overcook your eggs and get scrambled eggs. Everything is kind of temp, um, time sensitive with pastry cream. Good luck to Wesley. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much. Oh, I tell you, it's just, I, I'm not even taking the test and I'm nervous for him. Thank you, Caroline. Um, I just, it's emotional. Okay, I am going to put my camera down so you guys can see my ingredients and then I'll tell you one more time the, the spread that we have going here. All right. 
Hello, Hian. Good to see you too, and thank you. So here we've got 235 grams of whole milk. Then we've got 25 grams of high fat butter. <clears throat> it's fine if you don't have, if you just, if you live in a, uh, the US and have American butter, that's totally fine. This is European. This is, um, actually, no, it's not European. It's Kerrygold. So high fat still, Irish butter. I don't know, I mean, part of Ireland, sorry. Uh, anyways, okay, and then we've got sugar, 55 grams, oh uh, no, 58 grams of sugar, 17 grams of corn starch or corn flour, whatever you call it, 55 grams of yolks, which is about three yolk from large eggs, and then I'm gonna put in some vanilla bean paste I ran out of my Nielsen Massey, so when Trader Joe's has the paste, grab it in quantities because it's a, it's a great find, large quantities. Then I'm gonna have this prepped, which is a sheet pan with some cling wrap or saran wrap on top, and I'm gonna pour my pastry cream out on this when I'm done, and then I'm just gonna wrap it up and put it in the freezer really quickly to kind of blast chill it and to get it out of the dangerous temperature zone where bacteria grow. So you can either do something like this and prep a quarter sheet pan with saran wrap or prep an ice bath. So kind of like when you're making the salted caramel, um, the ice bath is gonna cool it down quickly and get it out of that scary bacteria temperature zone. I'm trying to figure out how I want to proceed with the camera angle for inside my... <clears throat> okay, let's try that. Oh, I'm not the genius, Caroline. I learned it in pastry school. <laughs> uh, but isn't that a great tip? It's one of my favorites. I really just want to see if I can get a little bit of my face too just because I feel weird, but I want you to see inside my pot. So let's do this. Give you some. Maybe that will help. Okay. A little bit more height, a little better. All right, guys. Let's see what time it is. Perfect, I'm gonna move it so it's not crooked. Sorry about all of that. I've always wanted to be a super like clean, modern, minimal household. But, children, I'll never be that way. What, oh. It says, what's all this husband talk? Dream deleted. Um, let me open up my jeeper jabber. It's still crooked, right? And you can't see in the box, in the pot. Okay, it is one. Let's get started. Hi, Trang. Hello. Okay. Um, someone said it's good. Let me just put it down. There we go. Is that more even? Even Stevens? Let's see. Okay, I think that's good. On my end, it looks really crooked and I don't wanna bother anybody. Does it look super crooked to you guys? <laughs> okay, let's get started. So we're making pastry cream. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to keep my computer here so I can read. But again, I just mentioned beforehand, thank you, Celine. I appreciate the feedback. Um, 
we are going to make pastry cream. It's one of those classical, basic French um, past uh, pastry meat, uh, let's see, pastry skills, there we go. It's not a pastry, but anyways, we're gonna fill our pastry with it, and you can do so much with pastry cream. One of my favorites was in France. They actually like made a cinnamon roll almost, and then they baked pastry cream on top instead of having the American like um, cream cheese frosting over it. And I absolutely loved it. The, the pastry cream over the, the cinnamon roll was so good. That was one of my favorite. And then you can also do the typical, you know, filling your French tarts with it or like fruit tarts, uh, mixing it with almond cream to make a frangipan um, and doing lots of like king's cakes or pativier with that. You can also fill eclair with it, of course. And some people even lighten the pastry cream with either um, whipped cream to make more of like a diplomat cream to fill your, your products with, or you can even mix pastry cream with buttercream and it's like a creme mousseline and that is really good too and stable for if you do like peri breast or something. Hi Courtney. So lots of different applications for pastry cream and in my favorite, absolute favorite dessert, the Saint Honoré, you fill the shoe paste with it and you also have like an inverted puff pastry and you fill the middle with it, the pastry cream lightened with the whipped cream. It's so good. So lots of things. <laughs> Enough with what we can do with it. Let's actually make our pastry cream. Uh, <clears throat> ooh, pan au raisin, pan au raisin. I can't say, you know, my accent is awful, but yes, that is another really good one. I forgot that that had that topping, that like inside of it. Yes, thank you for reminding me. They put the pastry cream inside and roll it up for the pan au raisin. Um, let's see here. From Greece, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is it Eleni? Thank you for being here. All right, so we've got our cup of milk, whole milk, preferably. We want all that fat in there for this to, to really thicken up. Now we've got our 25 grams of full, um, higher fat butter than your regular like American buttercream sorry, American butter. And we're just going to pour half of our sugar into here and then reserve some of the, the rest of the sugar is gonna go in with our yolks when it's time. So this is 58 grams of sugar here, just regular sucrose, granulated sugar, um, not castor or anything. So you're gonna be pouring half of it in, just eyeball it, because that's gonna help your milk not burn as you simmer all this together. I'm gonna turn this on low just to melt my butter and then we'll move forward and turn it up higher so it comes to a boil and then we'll eventually be tempering this milk and butter mixture into our yolks slowly so we don't um, curdle or cook our yolks too fast where you get like scrambled eggs. So we're gonna temper our milk in and then put the eggs back into the big pot. And I'll show you how we can bring this all together and emulsify it um, b without getting it gritty or overcooking those yolks. So I'm gonna show just how to slowly bring it up to temp and make a really creamy pastry cream. Um, Trinidad, hello, Olivia. I, let's see here. So we're just gonna melt this. I've got all my tools ready. We're gonna be straining this mixture. There's actually two points in this process where you can strain. I will be doing one today, but I will show, I'll tell you when you can do a second one in case you fear that you got a little bit of scrambled eggs. Okay, we're doing that. Now I shared, you have half of the sugar still, which was 58 grams and we have 17 grams of cornstarch. I'm gonna mix the cornstarch in with the sugar, just kind of like I do with the sugar and the egg white powder when I'm making mats. 
I'm gonna prepare them to be mixed in to make sort of like a slurry with my yolk, which is about three yolks, 55 grams of yolk. So pastry cream is so dang good. It's just a custard, right? And um, it's also really easy to overcook. And when you overcook it, you're going to get that extra eggy taste that's not really pleasant to the palate. Or if you undercook it, it's not gonna fully be set. And it's gonna be a mess when you try to fill um, pate choux with it or anything. It's just not gonna hold shape. And it's also a little dangerous because the yolk might not have been cooked fully. So you wanna make sure that you cook this nice and thick. And I'll share how to make sure you know that it's cooked as we go but I'm just melting that butter still. Let me help it along. And that sugar, right? We wanna dissolve the sugar, melt the butter, and then we'll bring it up to temperature and make sure that it is ready to start getting our eggs tempered. You can also add, let's add some salt. A pinch of salt, always. All right. Um, hello from Mexico. Hello, Anna and Laura. How do I pair pastry cream with mangoes? Oh, I mean, you could put either some mango puree into it to make it a mango, um, mango pastry cream or keep them separate and just put sliced mango over it and it'll be so good. Mango, um, a fresh mango fruit tart. You just want to make sure it doesn't get too soggy on top of that. Um, on top of the the pastry cream because mangoes can let out a lot of juice. You just have to be careful of that. Um, you could also make a fruit like jelly, gelé, <laughs> put some gelatin in with the puree of mango and so it will hold steady a little bit more and not leak too much liquid out onto the pastry cream and add like a layer of pastry cream, gelé, and then maybe a whipped cream, Chantilly cream. I'm thinking, I just want to eat everything mango. I've been talking about mango sticky rice. I just, oh, it's, a, it's that summertime cravings. I just ordered cookies from Amazon. Um, which are better to bake on? Cookie sheets from Amazon. Um, Carol, thanks for watching. Which cookie sheets are you talking, just, are there specifically good cookie sheets? Um, hi, Alicia. <clears throat> um, you know what? For freeze-dried fruits for pastry cream, I'd probably stay clear. I think more of a fresh uh, puree would be better for this. Pastry, uh, the freeze-dried fruits do so well in buttercream and stuff, and I just don't know. I'm sure you could. I just don't know if the texture would yield, would be nice with the creaminess from the pastry cream. Even if you were to really pulverize it. Okay, so we're melted here. You guys can see that, right? I was on low that whole time and I'm gonna turn it up now to medium. So I'm at a four and I'm gonna just let this simmer. So what we're gonna do now is you don't want to too early put your sugar into your yolks because if you've ever just kind of put sugar and let it rest on top of yolks, you notice it dries it out and kind of cooks them. So you don't wanna do that. You want all the moisture and all the fattiness in these yolks. So once this comes to about a steam, which is about 70 Celsius, we're going to start mixing these together and then it'll start to boil or simmer around 80 Celsius, it'll simmer. And then uh, we'll pour a little bit of this in. I, is it Celsius or Fahrenheit? Now I'm, I think Fahrenheit, right? Uh, so uh, 100 Celsius is boiling, right? Celsius, we're talking Celsius. Now I'm getting myself confused. Okay, uh, Nordic pans, great. Um, 
can't, I know, right? Mango sticky rice, it's just so comforting. Okay, my point is that once you see the steam coming up, right, it's really close to start simmering, and that's when we're gonna add our sugar and cornstarch mixture into our yolk. We're gonna mix it up and then add some milk to help it uh, really get incorporated. And then we'll start whisking vigorously the whole time after once we put these back in, we're gonna strain them into our pot and just continue to whisk on medium speed. And then I'll tell you more after that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Nordic Ware, I like Nordic Ware. I like, there's a like baking supply store and it doesn't really have, it's just an aluminum pan. I feel like it's basic aluminum. Okay, we're simmering here. So I went a little too far from right now. I'm gonna pour my sugar cornstarch mixture in here and just whisk them and see how it gets kind of clumpy and stuff. The milk will help loosen it up if necessary. And if you notice, I'm not using my aluminum pans, just kind of uh, like when you're making lemon cream or any type of egg dish. Um, let's see, lemon, I'm gonna pour some of this in to temper. I'm off, I'm off the heat right here. Um, what was I trying to say? When you're making lemon curd and stuff like that. There we go. You don't wanna use aluminum because the eggs react with the aluminum or the stainless steel. So we're just gonna pour about a third of this in to temp to bring those eggs to tempered um, to temperature and then if you got some yolk if you when you were separating your yolks you got some egg whites in here it's gonna make it a little more gelatinous and less smooth so the way to not include those egg whites is to strain it before it goes back in that pot i'm gonna add some vanilla at this point That was generous. I usually say about five grams. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this, it's off heat right now, but I wanna bring it into the frame. So I'm going to pour this back in. Try to get all that. I like to keep one spatula clean because I'm using this whisk right now to touch raw egg yolks. So I don't want to use this at the end, right? So you just want to keep your tools clean when you're dealing with eggs that aren't baked, fully baked. So I've got some, like, uh, what do you call those? Chunky things from when I scaled or just mixing. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's out as, as of right now. You don't have to deal with that. So that's gonna help you get a nice smooth product. And if you kind of make this emulsify slowly, which I'll show you how to do, then you're also gonna get a nice smooth product as well. So I'm on medium heat right now. And I'm gonna whisk until I see it thicken a bit. And then, once I start seeing it kind of coagulate at the bottom, I'm gonna take it off the heat to bring it together fully and then bring it back on the heat to finish off the cooking process. So we've got, I'm on a four out of six, so medium. And I can see it start to sort of pull from the bottom of my pan. I'll try to, you guys can see pretty much, right? It's starting to thicken and I can see it pull. So take it off your heat and bring it together off heat. This is gonna help it not scramble the bottom of your pot. And after it comes together nicely, then you can put it back on. Turn it on to medium high heat and we're gonna cook it till it starts to boil. And then once it starts to boil, you're gonna cook it 
additional one to two minutes just to cook off that starchy taste from the cornstarch. So we're at a boil. Can you see that on the pot? Okay. Let's do one minute for this size batch. One minute longer, and then we will have this ready. Now I like a stainless steel pot though for this, um, but because I can, I need to whisk. So unless you have good luck with silicone whisk, I suggest a stainless steel. Now, as you see, it's like actually cooling away, looks gelatinous, right? This is, you want it to be that thick or else it's going to be way too loose when you add it into your pastry cream. So for this size batch again, just one minute of the boiling process will be fine. And then that's my timer. You could also get a clean, um, clean sieve and do it one more time, um, meaning you could strain it one more time here if you feel like it didn't come together nicely, if you feel like you had some curdling or something. So you could do it one more time if you'd like, just make sure you have two strainers for that, okay? Now we wanna get it out of that danger temperature zone. I never recommend freezing your pastry cream longer than 15 minutes or else it, um, when it freezes, all the moisture leaches out and it's no good. So I set a timer for 15 minutes. I'm gonna put this in the freezer. Okay, that's gonna cool it and bring it out of the dangerous temperature zone. And it's going to allow, um, it's just gonna be quicker than putting it in the fridge. If you put it directly in the fridge at this point in a bowl, it's just gonna grow bacteria. Uh, what is it? Between 70 degrees to uh, Fahrenheit to like 135 degrees. I'm like trying to remember my serve safe stuff. Um, 70 to 135 is going to be your area of potential bacteria growth. It's like the largest at that point. So hyaluronine, you want to get it out of that temperature zone quickly or else, especially with a custardy filling, you could really grow bacteria and cause harm to whoever you're serving it to. So you want to make sure you boil that off, um, boil the pastry cream off once it comes to a boil for one minute at least with this size batch. It depends on how big your batch is. So that's not only going to kill off um, bacteria, cook your yolks, but it's also going to make sure that starchy taste is out of there. Hi, macaron maker. Um, so a couple reasons why you wanna boil it and uh, then either ice bath to get it out of the temperature zone. So put it into a bowl and then put in a separate bowl, a bigger bowl, put some ice and water and then put that, your bowl with the pastry cream on top. And then saran wrap directly over it because pastry cream develops a skin really easily. Um, okay, let's see here. Hi, Jessica, thanks for being here. Sorry about that. Let's see, let me, the thing, I feel like we get spoiled as macaron makers because we don't have a, I mean, there's dishes, right? But you don't have as much unless you're doing like royal icing decor on top or airbrushing. But for the most part, we've got a few ingredients and then the filling can really add. But you have so many ingredients when you make something like eclairs and all those things, I the dishes pile up so fast. Okay, so um, I could eat 
that I know it is the best thing. Pastry cream is my favorite. Um, let's see here. Ooh, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I recently made some eclairs. This is some like eclair templates uh, from Just Fine Best. And they actually really helped me because it just doesn't come easy to me to pipe anything but a circle now that because I practice so much with macarons. So if you guys want to, they gave me a special code for those today watching the live. You can use Live Big Toujours for 15% off if you want a clear template um, parchment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, anglaise would be fun. Yes, anglaise, one of my favorite sauces. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> oh my. I got sick, imagine that, after traveling to a wedding. Not COVID, just a cold, because I haven't been around other people forever. But it's just been so long since I've been sick. Okay, I hate washing dishes. Nina, I hear you, I miss, and I truly appreciated the dishwashers and the restaurants that I worked at because, or just like a dishwashing machine that you put the dishes in and push it down and then it's done in like 10 minutes. I miss that. I, the hand washing everything is just bleh. Okay. You should have seen my kitchen after finishing a day of baking. My cousin's wedding, oh my goodness. 3 a.m. You did all the macarons for the wedding in a day. Oh, <clears throat> that's crazy. Let me move away from my hot oven, I mean, hot um, stove top, whatever that may be. I'm like bending down. I don't know what to do. Let me change. So my timer will go off in 15 minutes. First time watching you and you're like, how are you? I'm good, thanks, how are you doing? Let's, TTO, okay. All my mats be with a big air bubble on top. Uh, yes, so macaron stuff. The gap, a lot, so with, with pad shoe as well as macarons, I feel like with our home ovens, especially, it, they can be difficult to get perfect. Um, so with pad shoe, I was just gonna tell you how much I struggle with the cracking in my home oven. You know, if you heat your oven too hot um, or you don't have a steam function like a normal, like still deck oven does in a restaurant or um, bakery, it's hard to keep it from cracking. And so there's just certain things that you have to play with your own oven with. And so with macarons, that gap from your, in your macaron shell, from the meat to the top of the shell is normal. And you kind of have to play around with temperature and it's a troubleshooting like whole day, right? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Learn to, love to learn how Uh, Tara, how my daughter's graduation is. So many ideas. So you just wanna make a ton of stuff for your daughter's graduation? Is that what you're saying? But you don't know what and how to make them? I feel you on that. I am overwhelmed. The end of the school year is this, is this Friday and I'm like, maybe I should do sugar cookies, but I don't do sugar. Like, why am I trying to make things that I don't always do? It's just funny. We just want everyone to have a good time and um, celebrate with something that we can make, right? And have it be customized to that, their experience. Uh, 
three hours to cycle through. Yeah, no, these dishwashers, you just like load them in, then you close this big like aluminum box, you close it in and there's like um, crates inside and then it blows all the water and then does the cycle really fast. We'd, <laughs> we'd always do it just because you'd need like, you go through so many bowls at work, you have to have a really quick process, a dishwashing process. Okay. Wow, Babar, that's awesome. Selling your macarons at age 13. Get it, girl or boy. Let's see. I'm glad you made it too. Oh, thank you, Running With Life. Okay. So what I was gonna say, I had some notes just because I didn't want to forget anything. When we're making the actual pastry cream, I wanted to specify some temperatures just so you can understand like what's happening. So when we usually, when eggs coagulate at about 150 Celsius, uh, 66, no, sorry, 66 Celsius, 150 Fahrenheit. My goodness, can I get this right? I'm just gonna confuse everybody. Eggs coagulate around 150 Fahrenheit, 66 Celsius. Um, when you're making a Swiss meringue buttercream or something like that, you don't want to heat your egg whites further than 62 Fahr um, Celsius because then you're gonna get to that coagulation period and you're gonna have really, uh, gritty Swiss meringue. So just knowing like when things coagulate, when things melt, what's their melting point, when things boil, these are all really important while you're making it to kind of understand. So when we're doing the pastry cream, we, we wanna make sure when we're tempering our eggs that we're not too hot of milk before and making it like do a heat. So you just wanna have a simmer and then you're gonna pour in your milk into your yolks keep it whisking so it's not sitting on it and cooking it. And then you're going to put it right back into your pot and slowly bring it up to temperature. And like I said, when you start to notice that it's coagulating a bit on the bottom, you can kind of see it, take it off the heat and slowly keep whisking it together. <clears throat> and once it becomes and looks like homogenous, then you're gonna go back on the heat and then turn it up higher to medium high to cook off the starch to make sure your eggs are fully cooked and to kill the bacteria. On oh, my pre-algebra, oh my goodness. Pre-algebra, are you in school still? Macaron maker? You're, I thought you are older. Oh, thank you. Got my, my bun, my messy bun. Um, okay, what else did I want to say? <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about Diplomat Cream. Um, so a lot of people homeschooled. <laughs> well, you are busy. So for your eclairs or say like if you're doing a peri breast or a, just a cream puff, like <clears throat> you're going to want to fill either, you can fill with straight pastry cream or you can lighten it up with whipped cream. Some people will add gelatin too, and this is called a Diplomat cream. You could also, especially for the peri breast, is typically hazelnut, I think. Hazelnut praline mixed with your pastry cream and buttercream. So more of the mousseline filling, because it's go you're gonna cut this in half completely, and you don't have the shell holding it all in and you just kind of pipe it on top. So you want it to hold steady and pastry cream does not keep form. So you definitely want to, uh, if something, if you're doing something like this and doing a peri breast, you're gonna want to have it, your pastry cream mixed with buttercream. Um, what else did I want to say? Turn 14. I like you, macaron maker. I like you, your tenacity. Okay. You make me want to go to patient. Courtney, it's honestly so fun. Like I had the biggest butterflies every morning before school, but um, it was worth it. Especially like 
you graduate college and you think you're going one way, but then you go back to, you know, more of a trades. <clears throat> and it was just something, you know, we don't experience in regular schooling these days, especially. Like, it was just so good. It's so amazing to actually find something that you're passionate about and daily, like, you're excited to go to class. It was amazing. Such a change. I mean, I loved schooling, but it was not, I just like doing it. So it's fun learning the science behind it and just being inspired by the chefs as well. Okay, I just turned in, but I used pastry cream in the background filling. Okay, <clears throat> so if you're gonna use pastry cream for a macaron filling, I would advise you to either one, mix it in with buttercream, like a mousseline instead, and make sure it's eaten right away. Pastry cream is really soggy and it's not going to hold well in your macaron for too long. I've done pure pastry cream in it and it has to be eaten within hours. Um, I would definitely mix it in with buttercream. And there's a lot of those, I don't know, Lottery has the the raspberry ones, right? And I think there's pastry cream in the middle, but uh, those definitely probably have to fly off the shelves and they can't just sit around. You could definitely play around with adding gelatin into it, which will help a lot. Um, I use sheet gelatin. Usually I'm using silver, which is the type of bloom. Um, it sets, it's like a medium set. I got back from work. I'm happy to see you. Um, let's see here. We've got 33 seconds left on our timer. I will sometimes add, if you guys saw when I was making the pastry cream, I added the, the vanilla extract willy-nilly or the vanilla paste. I just kind of put some in. I usually add it at the very end, like once I'm about to put it into my paste my shoe or my tart, I'll add the, the vanilla because I don't like to cook out my vanilla. So if you're using a bean, you could totally put the vanilla bean directly into your milk and that's gonna steep it and infuse the flavor. But I'm always afraid of cooking out my flavor with an extract or um, paste. So usually I put it in at the very end when I'm re-whipping my pastry cream because you always want to re-whip pastry cream before you use it, just like buttercreams. Okay, so now that's 15 minutes in the freezer. <clears throat> it is gonna go into a clean bowl. just a larger one but because I don't have one right now I have like this size or I have the stainless steel ones I know this doesn't look appetizing guys I promise you it is with pastry cream like that's how it looks when it comes out of storing and you just need to re-whip it and it gets nice and creamy Now, the other day I made a passion fruit um, pastry cream, and this is where you would add that flavoring. Let me show you. It's a little bit gelatinous. I might put too much cornstarch. Tastes good. Not eggy, super smooth on my palate. Very good. Uh, let me show you guys the I'm already. I don't have my <clears throat> my mango, but these are some of my favorite. The lychee or lychee. 
passion fruit, and then their pog. So all these like really yummy um, tropical flavors, I feel like are so good inside your pastry cream. And on the, the, the passion fruit is my absolute favorite because it has, it just tastes really true to passion fruit. It doesn't taste gross and artificial. Um, on here it says, use three to 5% when you're using in food. It gives you a drink level as well, how much to put there. All you have to do is, once you have this prepped and you're gonna fill things, you're gonna scale it out and then do three to 5% of that. So don't take this and assume you have a certain amount in here because you lose some grams as you make your product. So always rescale. You don't wanna add too much flavoring. If you add too much flavoring to anything, no matter how good your qual or qual how good the quality of your product is, it's gonna taste yucky. And I've made the mistake of putting some, of the, some in. I'm like, oh, I don't taste it. I put more in and I'm like, okay, finally I taste it. And then I let it sit and then it's overpowering. So you wanna just let it infuse into that and make, especially with buttercream, because it's so fatty, I feel like you really need to let buttercream sit with these before adding more, if it's not to your liking. But that's it. So I, I also like to add my um, vanilla paste at the end too, because I feel like this just makes it look all brown. Like I used a um, aluminum pan to, to stir it. Last time I, I add, so usually I would put my vanilla paste in now, like when I'm about to use it. And we're just gonna spoon this up and eat it. Let's see. I want a small spot. So it's a little gelatinous. I might have not scaled my cornstarch correctly, but it will be, no one's gonna notice that like in a filling thing. I can just see that it's not my favorite look. Then you can take a tip and kind of make two little holes in it. If you, if you decide to use this for eclairs, right? And then fill your pastry bag after you've whipped and fill her up. <clears throat> so I baked these previously on Sunday and then I froze them and then I just re them up in the oven 300 degrees for seven minutes and they are like they just came out. So I like to fill my um, <clears throat> eclair up till I can feel it kind of uh, push back and it's going to, this is, um, it kind of come, pops out the hole. Push backs and pop out the hole and then you can kind of clean them up after. But that one was broken. This one's better. See how it's coming out? Now I feel the expansion on the side and it's coming out. Take a paring knife and kind of um, take them off, but I don't have that paring knife with me right here. And that would have been cleaner. I'm just gonna use my finger. <laughs> and then you're ready to dip into whatever topping you choose. So I made a, um, a glaze, like a chocolate glaze over the weekend. I'm not gonna dip right now because it takes forever to get it to temperature. But I made a chocolate glaze here. If you decide to take my um, eclair class, this that will be in there. And then you're gonna dip. A super easy way is to top off your eclairs without doing the whole glazing process is melting some candy wafers or like those candy melts. Um, Merkins is my favorite brand. I feel like it tastes better than the others. It tastes like a, a nice white chocolate instead of um, just fake 
candy coating and then just dip them into your melted merkins with a little bit of coconut oil to loosen it up a bit and then you've got a pretty that's what i did for the the passion fruit with the pink topping if you are on instagram um, a glaze is really nice but it can just take a long time but I'll show showcase in my class a classic glaze as well as something a little speedier and still delicious. Reusable piping bags and have a hard time piping. I know, Jessica, <laughs> I lament disposable piping bags almost every day. Not for the sake, these ones, these ones are great. They feel good, they don't hurt, and they clean well. But I do have to say, when I'm doing like a rainbow or something and I'm using six different piping bags, it is so time consuming and getting all of the piping bags and tips when you could, with a disposable piping bag, you could just cut the tip off and use that. Um, but yeah. It's worth it for the environment, but it is a pain. I would definitely recommend trying, uh, I think a lot of people use the, the, and what is it, New York NY Cakes. I think they use these blue ones, and I feel like they look really nice and easy to pipe if it's really hurting your wrist when you're piping. Um, or you could do the, the, um, the Flower Girl piping bags, but they're smaller. So when I was doing like shoe, I had to use my canvas bags, which are harder to pipe with. Have I posted? No, I haven't posted this class yet. Um, they, I'm hoping this Sunday in my newsletter, Courtney, that I will have the details for this class. I'm trying to fit it into July. Um, so there you go. And then obviously it doesn't look that pretty right now, but you, would put the glaze on and then you wanna set it in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour and that's when they're at their best. Then you wanna sell them if you're selling, like if you have a bakery, don't mind me as I eat this. Or um, you could put them out to your guests if it's like a party or something. I like the heaviness of a pastry cream with this shell, but you can definitely lighten it. Um, I feel like a bigger, if you use a bigger tip when you're piping, um, lightening it with a cream would be nice. But because these are so small, the denseness of the pastry cream is perfect with this size. Okay. I think that's it. Again, if you want, why am I? <laughs> I know, I, I wish I could share these. They are, I don't know, custard things are just my favorite. Sticky mango, sticky rice, custards, bread pudding, all, um, Saint Honore, all like my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. So if you use that base recipe, honestly, this passion fruit with it, three percent. So if if you had a hundred grams of pastry cream, then you'd use three percent of the I'm already flavoring. <clears throat> it makes it taste so flippin' good. It's so refreshing. I mean, you can't really do better than custard and passion fruit together. Okay. Uh, pretty pale. Oh, thanks. Um, macaron maker, I just saw what you said about the color. Can you explain what pog is? I keep hearing it. Oh, Courtney. Yeah, sorry about that. Pog is passion fruit, orange guava flavoring. So it's typical in Hawaii. 
at least they have a lot of like pog juice and it is so good um, I highly recommend trying it if you've never tried it if you have a, a Hawaiian restaurant near you we just get like um, they have pog juice on the gun and we just got like a picture of it last time it's so good picture of pog juice okay I think did I miss anybody it's worth it it's worth it Hawaiian food is so good very mouth -hearty. all right guys hopefully I shared everything I wanted to I talked about peri breast diplomat cream wanting more of a creme mousseline for things that are if, if you cut this open, let me get a knife. So a peri breast is typically sliced open like this. And then you fill like um, the middle with the cream and then top it over. And usually like it's topped with hazelnuts or something like that. So when you're doing something like that, kind of like print cream puff style typical in the United States, then you're gonna want it to hold shape. So just a straight pastry cream is not gonna be a good choice. You wanna mix that with something. Aw, thank you, Zoe. Keep branching past macarons. Excited to learn more. Yes, I'm excited. People wanted to learn about pastry cream and I hope we want to know more. I, I just like, I want to do those croissant, rainbow croissants or just how to showcase how to make colored, colorful, tri-colored croissants or bi-colored. Anyways, I'm rambling and I feel like I, I'm just losing a lot. So I'm sorry guys. <clears throat> Thank you for being here, Eleni. I appreciate you guys being here. I know it's not as exciting as macarons, but it's a fun skill to have and I hope you guys use this recipe and eat your heart out because it's so dang good. Pastry cream forever. Maybe, um, make sure you scale your con uh, cornstarch 17 grams because I think I might have put a little too much. Cookie nibs! You missed it! Oh, it's so good to see your name in here though. It's been so long. Feel better. Thank you, Ian. I am, I'm like on the mend, but as I talk, it's like, I feel like I'm going to cough or something and I don't want to be off-putting as I am dealing with food for myself to eat though. Okay. Yes, we've missed you, Cookie Nibs. It's so good to see you here and I hope you're doing well. I know you have a busy schedule. Thanks to all of you guys. I know life is crazy. Were you sick? I was sick, macaron maker. I'm getting over it. Still have some post nasal drip. I, thank you. Just a normal cold, yeah. All right, my friends. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Tina, I am Tina. There, you can rewatch though. Okay, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you in two weeks. Um, happy summer. Happy summer. Bye, guys. Bye.